It's all snake. No, no. Stop flirting with snake. It's it's you. Oh, snake. Oh, it's crazy. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome come back to mm, fresh new piece of Hagoromo Chalk. This speaking Japanese Diamondo Akuda Kinai we are going to take talk about in unbreakable days fraction diamondo today. And at first I wanted to only evaluate what we have here just for the clickbait, but this morning I actually realized that we can generalize this thing really nicely and it's so cool and it would really help out the channel if you could watch a big portion of the video just saying. Also, there's going to be a complimentary outtake with a more nice generalized version of this thing over on the second channel Flample Maths 2. So if you want to see way more regular maths content go over to Flample Maths 2 and subscribe. Also snack merch finally out and, and snack is the most adorable thing ever. It's so cute. Let us go ahead and get started. Before mathematicians start to generalize something what generalization means in this contest, a uh, context we are going to talk about in a second. We first start off with smaller ends all right so with small version special cases and we have to think about what it means for something to be the smallest kind of diamond of this form well we obviously need fractions and you might notice that there's like a symmetric main fraction bar right here in the middle it's the main vinculum i'm going to refer to it as being the main vinculum well the smallest case we could have is having a one on top and on the bottom of the main vinculum. So just one over one as being the smallest diamond possible and obviously it's just one. So this is quite interesting. Thanks for watching. We are done generalizing this thing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao. So what is the next case that we are going to have? Right now we had the case where n is equal to one. What n means I'm going to explain now. n in our case, so for this one, n is equal to four because Above and under the main vinculum, we are going to have four ones added to each other. One plus one plus one plus one, four ones. n is equal to four. Meaning if we were to have the case n being equal to two, we would have one plus one over one plus one above and under the main vinculum. But what happens to our diamond when we get um, higher or lower? Well, it just so happens that we are going to reduce the bar the, the n by your one all the time. So n, n minus one, n minus two, blah, 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 up until one. Meaning, if we have n minus one, it's just going to be a two minus one is one, okay? And a one down here. So this is the second smallest diamond we could think of. And now we can start computing stuff. At first, it's a nice strategy to just bring all the ones together, add them together. Meaning, since we are going to have n, just being one plus one plus one is always just the n there. Okay, so we are going to have one over two. Our n was equal to two over two over one. Two over one is just two. So that's nice. And what we have here now is just one half times one half, giving us one quarter. I'm going to write it as one over two times two. Okay, cool. This case is done. And now for the case where n is equal to three. This case is a bit more spicy because now we need to talk about the notation such that this exercise does not become ambiguous in some way. So n being equal to 3 suggests that we are going to have 1 over 1 plus 1, so this n minus 1, and then over 1 plus 1 plus 1, and then big vinculum, main vinculum, over 1 plus 1 plus 1, over 1 plus 1, over 1. Okay, now we can start collapsing everything yet again, and it's always going to be the same pattern all the time. It's going to be 1 over 2 over 3 over 4, and then um, no, not over 4. We are going to have n being equal to 3 over 3 over 2 over 1. 2 over 1, so the last step is always going to vanish. It's just the number in itself, 2. And now we can start collapsing everything. Like I said, ambiguous notation, we need to talk about what is going to happen here. So the cool thing is, what we are dealing with is basically just a complex fraction. And in the numerator, we are dealing with complex fractions on top of complex fra fractions all the time. Under the main vinculum, we have the disadvantage that basically we need to place big parentheses because we are going to divide by one big fraction overall, meaning it's to the negative one power. But 
In the process of doing so, we need to place more parentheses because we are going to divide by yet another fraction yet again. So placing parentheses is key here. Up here there's really nothing to worry about because this is just one half times one third. This is just how complex fractions work. So this is going to give us one over two times three over and now in our case it's just three over two. And now we are going to have a complex fraction yet again with a fraction on top and a fraction on the button. And now we can just invert this fraction here, take the reciprocal, leaving us overall with um, 2 comes on top, 2 over 2 times 3 and times 3. Okay, we can't really see a pattern yet, but let us go a step further to n being equal to 4, all right? And at first I would like to place parentheses such that nothing here is ambiguous yet again. Up here, nothing to worry about. It's numerator, we are not multiplying with, or, or, or we are not raising anything by negative exponent. Let's put it like this. But down here, we are going to have big parentheses. Then we are going to divide by yet another fraction, and then we are going to divide by yet another fraction. Putting parentheses is key. And now we can go ahead and get started. Once again, it's always the same process. It's 1 over 2 over 3 over 4, this time really up until 4, and then we are going to have 4 over 3 over 2 and then over 1, but we don't need that. You, you might notice something. This complex fraction up here collapses yet again into 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. I have put the 1 there on purpose because you might notice what we had before. We had 1 over 2 times 3. You can multiply by 1, it doesn't change anything. This is 3 factorial. 1 over 1 times 2, basically 2 factorial. 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, 4 factorial. Meaning we can generalize this using factorials in some way. I'm going to put it like this. But what about down here? Now, don't forget your parentheses. 4 over 3 halves is going to give us 4 times 2 over 3. So over 4 times 2 over 3. Don't forget your parentheses. Now we are going to invert this fraction here, taking the reciprocal, leaving us with 3 comes on top. So this is 1 over 4 factorial times 1 over this chunk gives us 3 over 4 factorial times 4 times 2. Ah, all right, looks better. Now we are going to take a look at the case when n is equal to 5 and then we can chart uh, start generalizing this whole thing. I'm so speech disabled in less time. Actually, I started stuttering yet again. I stuttered back when I was like four to six years old and now it started yet again I really need to take care of me speaking so so you might have noticed in the last videos already that I started stuttering more my wife actually told me about this and I didn't notice for myself stuttering is weird you don't even notice that you are stuttering it's so damn retarded now n is equal to five meaning this chunk, I'm not going to write it out, is going to collapse into what we have here. Meaning for n being equal to 3, we are going to have exactly 1 over 5 factorial. This is just a big numerator. So 1 over 5 factorial over 5 over 4 over 3 over 2. And now let us start collapsing the denominator yet again. This is in parentheses. We are going to have 1 over 5 factorial. And then over, we are going to have 5 over and then putting this here is 4 times 2 over 3. Put parentheses ar around it, take the reciprocal. 1 over 5 factorial over and this gives us 5 times 3 over 4 times 2. Put parentheses and the last step is to take the reciprocal yet again. So 4 times 2 over 5 factorial times 5 times 3 ah, times 5. And then we are done. Now we can start generalizing this, which is pretty easy. And we are going to make use of kind of a new special mapping that I haven't used before explicitly. I have always rewritten it into something different, which you can see on the uh, second channel, Flamble Maps 2. Now, what is the nth case? So what is the generalized version? It's 1 over 1 plus 1 over up until 1 plus plus 1 and we have this n times over and then just 1 plus dot dot plus 1 over dot dot over 1 plus 1 over 1. This is the generalized version. Looks quite ugly. Am I right? And what is always happening? What is always happening? Let us spot a pattern here. What we always have is 1 
or something, should I say rather, should I rather say something, something over n factorial. Our n was 5 in this case, we are going to get n factorial, 4 factorial, n factorial, all right? I hope we can spot a pattern here, so something over n factorial. But what we also have is, okay, here we have 4 times 2. Here we basically had 3 times 1. Hmm. What we had here was just 2 and what we had here was 1. What happens if we have the case for, seven, uh, for n being equal to 7? Okay, let us write this out. n being equal to 7, we are going to have, it's going to be raised by 2. So um, the, the n is going to be raised by 2 here. So 6 times 4 times 2 over 7 factorial times 7 times 5 times 3 times 1. I'm going to put the 1 there on purpose, it's important. What we have here is kind of the factorial in the numerator and also the denominator, just that we are missing like the, well, 3 and the 5 and the 1. So we are missing its odd parts. This thing is called a double factorial. And you might notice, so if we skip a step in between, it's called a double factorial. Same should be here, 6 is missing, 4 is missing, 2 is missing. This is called a double factorial. Now we only need to assign a value to the double factorial, namely 6 times 4 times 2, 6 is n minus 1. This thing is called n minus 1, double factorial, denoted by just a factorial times 2, basically. And down here, what we had was 7 times 5, blah, blah, blah. 7 was our n in this case, leaving us with exactly um, n double factorial in our case. And this is basically the generalized version. Might seem unsatisfying. This is why there's going to be a complementary video over on Flamble Maths 2. But this is one of the usages for double factorials. It just popped up here randomly. I think that's pretty cool. And the double factorial can be split up into a three-part casework where n is odd, n is even, and n is zero. And I hope you did enjoy this video. It was kind of interesting, in my opinion. If you did, please like and subscribe my comment channel. Like, check out my Twitter, check out Flamble Maps too, please. I want subscribers there. No, uh, I just love creating the content over there. And maybe you will like it too. And yeah, go over there, watch the complimentary video where we are going to rewrite this into some nicer notation, basically. I'm not using a special mapping here. And if you have any suggestions for video, leave them down there in the comments below. Also, recommend the videos to other people if you do enjoy them. And maybe you think other people could enjoy them too. And up until next video, I'm wishing you guys a snack day. Snack, come here. Snack approves of the new snack merchandise or snack. No, no. Stop flirting with snack. It's, it's you. Oh, snack, oh, it's crazy. See ya.